Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Renee Barabo, the Practical Shaman. Hi, everyone. I'm Sandra Ingerman I'm here in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and sending blessings to all of us. So today we have um, an interesting show that Renee and I have been uh, talking about in that um, there is so much change going on, and we've done other shows on infrastructures falling apart and frustration and human emotions coming out, sometimes inappropriately, sometimes appropriately. And um, what ISIS, my my uh, spiritual um, teacher, helping spirit, um, who helps me with world issues. She doesn't help me with my personal issues, but <laughs> with world issues. She said that um, we all must find inner peace before any healing is going to happen. And we're in a time where there is so much dissolution, and we keep talking about that over and over again. And there was a, um, a scientist, Ilya Prigozhin, Gizoni, sorry, I, I say his name all the time, but I have a hard time pronouncing it. And he won the Nobel Peace Prize for coming up with a type of um, uh, dissipative um, uh, chaos kind of theory. And basically what he says is that before a cell can reorganize to a new structure, to a new evolution, a person, an organ, a city, a country, you know, so he was saying any little, little part of life, there has to be um, a dissolution factor where everything falls apart before the new evolution of consciousness can be birthed into that new cell, that person, um, that piece of land, um, that organ, and on and on. And this directly, it, it, it this theory has always excited me. I learned about it in the 1990s. I should be able to get his name by this time. Um, and it excites me because it goes back to the shamanic uh, practice of dismemberment, which is the most important initiation that there is in shamanism, is for you, your body, to actually be dismembered so that your body is left behind where if it's ill, the helping spirits can lick the organs and lick your bones and redo anything that uh, needs to be left out and put in healing energy. But in the meantime, your spirit consciousness goes back home. So you die while you're still alive, basically in the dismemberment. And your spiritual consciousness goes back home where you get, again, to remember you are a reflection of the creator and you are a being of self-love. And what all there is in life is union, light, and love. And then the initiate comes back with psychic gifts and healing gifts. So typically a person in a shamanic community who went through such a initiation through a vision or through a dream was actually called the shaman of the community because they came back with the clairvoyant gifts and the healing gifts that we all go back to when we remember source. And when we remember we're source and there's no separation. Wow, it's so interesting you're saying that because it wasn't until I was sitting here on the podcast with you that I realized the significance of that um, initiation I had 24 years ago. And I know that I know that it was 24 years ago because um, I, I told Sandra earlier that I went back to that same exact spot this last week and it wasn't the same dismemberment, but it was a new dismemberment. But the first time, you know, I was ripped apart, 
I don't know if they were licking the bones or not, but I was sewn back with arrows and then I was taken to the to the garden for an interview, which I was given the job and I accepted. And so last week I poked out my eye and talk about from exhaustion, from from, you know, too much, too much moving, too much of all of this chaos that, that's falling apart kind of stuff. I'd been traveling for weeks. I poked out my eye and I happened to be at a convention at the same exact place where and you were there, Sandra, that year that I had that initiation with uh, it was at the La Quinta Hotel at the IONS conference. And and when I was here again, it was like my eye was, you know, I had a black patch on. I couldn't see everything I was seeing in double. And I went out. I was walking serendipitously without even thinking about it. And I started to relay that story about 24 years ago about that dismemberment experience. And, you know, my boss, who's a 24 year, 24 lifetime lineage rabbi is like looking at me and I'm there like and right when I started to talk about this dismemberment, all of a sudden the eye healed. It was like in a flash, the eye healed. I mean, the, by the, there was no more putting the patch back on. I still kind of saw double for a little, you know, the rest of the day. But when I woke up the next day, you would have never known that I poked out my eye with the, I, a, plactus, a plastic cactus went in my eye when, without me blinking. And it was the craziest thing because if you're, if you've had that shamanic dismemberment, I believe it's happening again right now for all of us. But are we putting enough awareness to the fact that we're having a collective dismemberment, personal dismemberment, and really, you know, when I just did the fall retreat, we did a lot of grief work. We had grief altars. We did, oh, they, the winds just gave me these new grief wind knots, and I'm going to be teaching a, a wind knot class in November on um, wind knots for grief and, um, and, and loss. And really that we have to come to this realization that these dismembered parts of us not all of them need to be put back into the same configuration. Right. Yeah. And shamanism um, uh, and dismemberment, oftentimes um, the shaman actually wasn't put back. The term used is remembered for years. I actually had a, one of my dismemberments. I've had a, a, a few and some that I've asked for for healing, which is a topic for another show, but um, I had a dismemberment back in the 1990s, and I'm still hanging on this tree as a skeleton. The spirits have not put my body back together yet. Mm. And so, yeah, so what Renee and I were talking about was with all this dissolution that's going on, um, uh, and the, the show that uh, we did connected to this show was forgiving ourselves because we get triggered when nothing's working and we get so frustrated. Nothing's working. Nothing's working. Uh, supplies are down. We can't get services when we need them. We can't get medical help when we need it on and on and on. So we did a show on self-forgiveness, but another part of that um, is about being able to find inner peace um, because this is going to go on. Mm -hmm. And how crazy do you want to make yourself? <laughs> how frustrated do you want to live your life every day? And um, I've always used, um, I, I self-published a, a book in 1997, A Fall to Grace, it had uh, a cult following for a while, mostly a teenage cult <laughs> following, but I still have a thousand copies in my shed, <laughs> um, <laughs> basically because um, not selling them. Um, <laughs> that's another story, but <laughs> um, that's another dissolution. <laughs> yeah, but um, but you know, I, it. I started the whole book uses the um, one of the helping spirits that 
I worked with back in my early days with Slautza, and so the whole metaphor of the book is about the river of life. And, and you actually can still order the book. You can get it through Barnes & Noble. So I sell about three a year. <laughs> um, and, um, and so the whole book is Lao always comparing everything I'm doing to the flow of the river of life. And um, when you look at the river of life, the bottom line is you have all this turbulence, you've got the smooth waters, you've got the turbulent waters, you have many different experiences. And when you can, when you can broaden your perspective, which is not easy, um, I'm struggling with it myself, but when you can broaden your perspective to a bigger picture, it's just part of your life's journey. Mm -hmm. It's just another part of your life journey. It's, it's, it's the turbulent part of the river that's going to pass. Um, and you don't kick and scream when you're rafting down a turbulent part of a river. That's not the, you, you find your center, mm -hmm. you find your center and, and you ride those waves and you don't go down um, and you keep moving forward. And so we really have to come to a place of understanding that everything that's happening now is part of our life's journey. And we have to find inner peace around that. Um, mm -hmm. And that our journey is going to take us to many different places on the river. And in a fall to grace, the line that I use around that is the river of life will take you to many places, but you must learn how to feed yourself along the way. <laughs> it's interesting as you're talking about the river, because I was thinking this week, because somebody wrote um, something about, you know, how, how healing could be gentle and magical. And I'm thinking like, well, when when the wind whipped up the eastern seaboard, there was no mercy. There was no there was no oh I think I'll just give this leave a little bit of a, a pat on the you know it was like it comes up the eastern seaboard and wipes out everything that it hits New Orleans and then you know all the way up. So if if we really are nature, there's that quality of the unrelenting windstorm that's part of it it made me think of like i have a, a little um a little meditation we can do oh great i i just it just popped in when you were talking about the river we've done the river journey a lot but we haven't done we haven't gone in through the eye of the 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 tornado oh, great. to find that center spot in the side and that's like a pretty bumpy ride so uh if you what do you think oh i love it i love this journey you know okay <laughs> All right. Well, I've got my wind whistle. I wish I wish there was a way that you could rattle and drum in the same time that I wind whistle. But we haven't quite mastered that art yet. So um, I will do I guess I could rattle a little bit and play the wind whistle. But we'll go in quickly. I mean, there's no sense of lingering in this tornado too long, but it'll kind of give you a sense that Well, you'll find out what it'll give you a sense of. Was there anything else you want to say before I did that or? No, I think it's perfect. And and just to remember that first you meet the chaos and then you meet the peace. <laughs> okay, I invite everybody to close their eyes. And imagine yourself somewhere in nature. And as you look up into the horizon, there's a tornado coming right at you that you're not going to be able to miss. You hear the rumbling. As you go, imagine yourself, you're going to go into the chaos of the tornado, and you're going to get tossed about, maybe. Ask what's 
that's the lesson in the chaos. And then, in a moment's time, you're going to step into the center of the tornado, where it's absolutely still, absolutely peaceful. Imagine yourself anchoring yourself with your inner spin axis all the way down from the center of yourself into the earth, into the molten lava, all the way down and all the way above the swirling wind, being in the peace of it all. Feel that deeper connection to the earth and to the, the heavens. And as you're there, staying in that peaceful situation, the tornado dissipates, it weakens, the storm weakens. And what you're left with is the power of the self, the power of your unique ability to align to your magnetic poles, your magnetic north. Thank you, nature, and thank yourself. And then when you're ready, come back into the room. And just remember, you can step in through that tornado at any time and find that inner peace inside. That was beautiful, uh, Renee, and and I love um, what how you ended by saying that um, you can see yourself because it's a it's such a potent image to hold of seeing yourself walking through that turbulence and that chaos and and just being in inner peace and. And having the tornado swirl around you, it's a, it's a really good image to hold throughout the day. Mm. I love it. <laughs> now I'm feeling a little more grounded. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I hope you enjoy that. And uh, as you know, we do this because we love coming together and sharing our wisdom. And you can follow us over at shamanstv.com or on our Facebook page, The Shaman's Cave. I read every every response you make over at the YouTube channel, and there's always a lot of comments. A lot of people feel more comfortable sharing their experience there. Um, Sandra's just ending a class right now. I, I'm teaching a class at the moment. And stay with us. I can't believe we're almost at the year end of year three. Is that like, <laughs> is that un unbelievable? I know. I went out to dinner with some friends last night, and so I had to sit at the table and sign them up for um, the shaman's cave. And um, and I um, I said, "Oh my God, we're actually on year three. This is unbelievable." <laughs> <laughs> uh, amazing and that we always we might repeat ourselves sometimes but we always have a new twist or a new experience the nice thing about being shamanic practitioners is that the spirits are always downloading new information and it and helping us see things in a new way so even if we repeated it in year one if we repeat it in year three it's going to sound just a little bit different because like all things that are dissolving our experience is dissolving and coming back together and and re meshing and we're just two cells sitting here sharing. <laughs> Thank you, Renee. That was perfect. <laughs> well, have a beautiful day or evening, everyone. Blessings.